In postulate 3, we saw that when we make a measurement of an observable quantity in quantum mechanics on a quantum system, then the only outcomes that you get are eigenvalues of the operator corresponding to the observable that you are measuring. Now, this postulate, postulate 4, tells us what the probability is of obtaining a particular outcome or a particular eigenvalue when you make a measurement of an observable. Recall that in classical mechanics, when you measure an observable, like you measure energy, let us say, on identical classical systems, you always get the same result, the result is identical. Note however, that that is not the case in quantum mechanics. If we make a measurement of an observable associated with the operator A on multiple replicas of the quantum system, we get different eigenvalues of A as the outcome, okay, that we know from postulate 3. But you get them with different probabilities and you get them with absolutely definitive probabilities. This postulate, postulate 4, tells us what the probability is of getting a particular outcome when you make the measurement of the observable A. There are a few things we have to discuss before we go to the statement of postulate. Suppose, psi is the wave function of the system in question, the one which we are making the measurement on and let us say a hat is the operator corresponding to the observable that we are measuring. Recall from postulate 2 that this operator A needs to have some special properties. In particular, it must be Hermitian and its eigenfunctions should form a basis of the space of wave functions of the system. So, its eigenfunctions which are given by this eigenvalue equation a phi i is equal to a i phi i for various different i's should satisfy the conditions which are given here. In other words, the eigenvalue should be real and the eigenfunctions should be orthonormal which is given by this statement which we have discussed during postulate 2. Now, since the phi i's which are eigenfunctions of this operator A form a basis of the space of wave functions, I can write R wave function as a linear combination of these phi's or a linear combination of these eigenfunctions. This is similar to the, the way where I write a general vector as a linear combination of its basis vectors like i, j and k or it is similar to a Taylor expansion where I write a general function as a linear combination of polynomials. Now, if the wave function is normalized, this imposes a certain condition on the coefficients c i. The normalization condition is psi psi is equal to 1 and if I substitute the expansion of psi in terms of the basis functions into that condition and just work out the math keeping in mind that these eigenfunctions phi n and phi j are orthonormal, then this is the condition I get which is the sum of the squares of these coefficients is equal to 1. So, the normalization conditions implies that the sum of these coefficients is equal to 1 as given here. Now that we have written the wave function of our system as an expansion in the eigenfunctions of the operator A, we are in a position to understand or to postulate what will be the probability of obtaining a particular eigenvalue a n. We postulate that the probability of obtaining an eigenvalue a n when observable a is measured is given by the square of the coefficient corresponding to a n in this expansion of psi. Okay, so, if you are measuring a n then the cor uh, corresponding coefficient is c n and you have to take the modulus square of that coefficient to give you the probability of obtaining the particular eigenvalue a n. Now, if you just had the wave function psi and wanted to obtain the coefficient c n, then what you could do is project the wave function onto the corresponding eigenfunction of c n, which is project psi onto phi n eigenfunction corresponding to c n and then by substituting an expansion of psi into this expression, you can verify that indeed c n is obtained by projecting psi onto the eigenfunction phi n. We can now give the formal statement of postulate 4. When an observable with operator A is measured on a quantum system with normalized wave function psi, then the probability P a n 
of obtaining the eigenvalue a n of a is given by this projection of psi on the corresponding eigenfunction phi n and that projection modulus squared which is a number is a real number which is the probability of obtaining the eigenvalue a n. Now, as you know probability is a number and the sum of probabilities of all events has to sum up to 1. You can check that that is indeed consistent because if you sum up the probabilities of obtaining all the different eigenvalues, you see that this uh, leads to the condition that the squares of all the coefficients is equal to 1, which is of course true because we are using a normalized wave function psi and we saw that this is the condition on this on the coefficients is something that follows when the wave function psi is normalized. From postulate 4, we have seen that the measurement of a physical quantity on a quantum system gives a definite distribution of eigenvalues. It is therefore possible to obtain the average value, value of this distribution. In fact, every time we have a distribution, the quantity that we want to, uh, a quantity that we associate immediately with a distribution is its average. Now, the average value of the measured observable A on a system uh, which is given by the wave function psi is given by psi star A psi integral d tau. This is a result which we can prove quite easily by making an expansion of this wave function in terms of the eigenfunctions of the operator A. So, let us look at the proof of this. We start by writing psi as a linear combination of the phi i's. So, c i's are the coefficients in front of the phi i's and then we plug that into the expression of, of, on the right hand side which is psi a psi and then you see that the operator a operates on the Eigen function to give you the Eigen value a j and now you are left with this phi i phi j integral which is the Kronecker delta function which is when i is equal to j it is equal to 1, when i is not equal to j it is equal to 0. Effectively, we see that now the right hand side is equal to the probability of obtaining eigenvalue A multiplied by the eigenvalue itself. Okay, so, probability of eigenvalue A i multiplied by eigenvalue A i which is just a weighted average of the values A i's. That is the average value of uh, this uh, observable when you make a measurement on the wave function psi. This is a very useful result for comparing with experiments because when you make an experiment, when you, when you do an experiment when you, uh, in the lab, you obtain a quantity and if you had to connect that with quantum mechanics and to uh, calculate it theoretically, what you would be typically comparing it with is the average value that you get from the quantum chemical calculation. Now, just to note this average value that we are talking about psi a psi star integral is sometimes incorrectly called the expectation value. Now, this is just uh, nomenclature which you have to be careful about even though it is called expectation value, it is not that when you make a measurement this is the value that you will expect because when you make a measurement the value that you would really expect are eigenvalues of the operator A not this average value. It is just a nomenclature which you have to be careful about. There are a few points to note in the context of this postulate 4. The first, it should now be very clear to you that the wave function contains all information about the properties of the system and this postulate has told us how to obtain the properties. You know that the properties uh, that when you make a measurement, the values that you will obtain are all eigenvalues of the operator corresponding to the property that you are measuring and we also know now how to get a distribution of those eigenvalues. It is a completely definitive distribution which depends on the state of the system or the wave function of the system psi. The second point to note is that suppose the wave function psi happens to be an Eigen function of the operator A. Now, this is not normally the case. In general, the Eigen function of the system would be some sort of linear combination of the operator A and in this case when you make a measurement you will get a distribution of values. However, in the special case that the wave function is an Eigen function of the operator A, you end up with only one Eigen value. You 
uh, every time you make, make a measurement you will just get that one Eigen value which is corresponding to that Eigen function that psi is. There is absolutely no uncertainty in this case when you make a measurement there is no distribution anymore or rather the distribution is just a peak distribution with probability 1 corresponding to the Eigen value that your wave function corresponds to. Finally, the third point to note is that if this operator A has certain Eigen values which are degenerate and let us say that this Eigen value A n is G n fold degenerate then there has to be a slight modification to this postulate about getting the probability of this Eigen value A n. In this case when A n is G n fold degenerate the probability of getting Eigen value A n is the sum of the projections of the uh, uh, wave function on all the Eigen functions corresponding to the Eigen value A n. So, you see now that it is a summation. You can also quickly appreciate that in the case that the degeneracy is 1 or rather it is non degenerate then the summation will simply reduce to the earlier expression that we talked about in which p of a n is just one term. We now discuss another postulate which is not of that much significance for us directly in this course, but let us look at it just for completeness and I will call this postulate 4 prime. This postulate will help us under, uh, account for that experiment that we discussed earlier where when you make a measurement in on a quantum system this, this uh, when you make the me measurement the second time you get the same Eigen value. In other words a measurement is immediately repeatable. The postulate which accounts for that experimental observation is the following if the measurement of an observable with operator A gives the result A n then the state of the system or the wave function of the system immediately after the measurement is phi n where phi n is the Eigen function corresponding to the Eigen value that you measured. So, note that this is implying that when you make the measurement the system is changing as a result of that. This is very different from what you have in classical mechanics. In classical mechanics the act of measurement does not really change the system. However, in quantum mechanics once you make the measurement the system has irreversibly changed so to something different from what it was before.